So let's start the Baldo segment with uh, Aaron M. Halt just taking a little jab at Ricada, and then we'll move on. Assuming. Um, oh, is that true? JH says Aaron Chrissy Mayer was blaming you for Nick Ricada's downfall. Me? See, I would I would have said it was the other way around. Like if I hadn't gotten out of that cyclone of shit. That could have brought me all the way down. Almost did. I would say it's the other way around. He was uh, he was already a mess when I met him. I mean, high on Molly, the night of the show. Uh, he licked my face the first night we met. We're at Benton Station. Licks my face. Like, come on. We're not licking faces. Stop. He did that like three, four times. He was a face licker. <laughs> Don't be a face licker. Uh, Kiki cried. That's funny. Um, this happened on stream, even. I'm pretty sure Ricada licked his face in the hot tub stream. Does anybody else remember that? Is that like a figment of my imagination? Is that like a rogue memory that I've conjured? I'm pretty sure that happened in the stream. So I remember... I remember that they were being really gay with each other in the jacuzzi, and you could tell that the women were both really annoyed by this. Because it was supposed to be like a hot swinging thing, like where they, they swapped the wives or whatever. And then the guys are like licking each other. And they're both like visibly disgusted by this. <laughs> uh, soft update on the... Remember that Rakeda has ongoing family issues, criminal issues, and civil issues. And in the civil case... Uh, where he's being sued by Steve Quest, a.k.a. Montagraph, for defamation per se, where he accused him of being a, um, for all, for, has always liked sucking little boy dicks, is I believe the exact statement he used. His civil court judge was Judge Pussy Licker, also known as Jennifer Fisher. Uh, she was re she was asked to recuse in the criminal case, and by Minnesota state law, you get a free one free do over with your criminal court judge. So when they asked her to recuse, she did. She didn't challenge it because he statutorily has one free judge re roll basically per case, um, and he believed that it would be a bad idea to let her be the presiding judge. Well, in the civil case, similarly, she has recused, and I believe that this was done sua sponte. She just simply decided that she would like to recuse from this case. And now, uh, Honorable Stephen J. Winsel is the judge in the civil case. Now, if that name sounds familiar, it's because that's the judge in the criminal case. So, uh, I believe that may also be the judge in the family case, but don't quote me on that. So, now this guy is officially the state-appointed Baldo handler <laughs> in, all, in all matters, legal, criminal, or civil. Uh, Mr. or Honor, Honor, Honorable Winsel is at the helm, uh, representing Minnesota <laughs> in, in these matters. Um... So I don't know what the outcome of that will be. I think there's some reason to speculate that this guy is not on Ricada's side. Uh, personally, he probably thinks that Ricada is a dickhead. And the reason why I can say that is because of this filing. Let me let me think about how I want to address this real quick. Give me a second to gather my thoughts. So when Ricada was arrested. The first thing that happens in a Minnesota trial, as far as I'm aware, is that they schedule something called an omnibus hearing. Now, you have, between the point of being indicted and the trial in criminal cases, each state and the federal ju jurisdictions have their own procedures. And there are there is a timely way to file certain motions, certain challenges, certain requests um, before the trial begins. Uh, Minnesota has a really... Um, big hearing, pretrial hearing, called the omnibus hearing. And unlike in a lot of states, um, Minnesota gets a lot of stuff done in this one hearing, which is why it's called the omnibus, because it's everything. Basically, everything that you want to file before the trial happens at the omnibus hearing. Everything. If you want to file something, it must be done, it must be heard at the omnibus hearing. That's why we sent a bunch of people to this hearing, because it's a big deal. 
and a lot of things that would be hashed out and set the the pacing of the case would happen if the Omni was hearing. So the Kiwi SEAL Team 6 or whatever arrives at the court, gets hassled by Ethan Ralph, uh, waves goodbye to him, um, so on and so forth. That all happens, and it was kind of it kind of felt underwhelming. And I was a little bit irritated, because I assumed that there would be like a continuance and there would be a second omnibus hearing. Because all that happened at the omnibus hearing is that Riketa, uh asked for a Franks hearing. And a Franks hearing is named after a Supreme Court precedent where it said that if a police officer lies materially to a judge and gets a warrant, and that warrant would not have been granted if that police officer did not lie, then anything that the warrant obtained would be fruit of the poison tree and would be inadmissible in court. So that means the body cam footage, that means the cocaine that they found, that means that the weapons that they found, that means that anything that they found as a result of that warrant would be thrown out, and that's basically as good as dismissing the case, right? So, Riketa said that the cop had lied because he watched the stream of Riketa fucked up on whatever, on coke and alcohol, on the big, um, on the Anime Sucks Cope and Sneed stream. The judge, Officer Pomplin, said that that had happened. And um, Riketa asked for a Franks hearing, and he wrote, his attorney wrote, or some people think that he's writing them, but he wrote and said that um, Pomplin had watched a stream that was archived on fucking Cog, Cognificent, the, the retard, Jobless Johnny, on his um, internet backyard or whatever... I can't remember what it's called, on his archive channel. And um, therefore, he lied materially under oath to the judge, and the warrant would not have been granted if the, he had said that he had watched an archive. And in part because they said that the stream was edited and watermarked. And the reason why he said that is because COG on YouTube had added a watermark to the channel, and that's a part of the player. That's not a part of the video. Um, so th the way that this works is that he went to the omnibus hearing. He asked for the Franks and nothing else. Kiwi Team 6 walked away. Felt a little bit underwhelming. Um, then Riketa files his first motion in support of the Franks hearing, which outlines all the things I just talked about. The state comes back with a reply, says you're full of shit, you're wrong. Uh, it's very clear from the affidavit that he's actually being very truthful um, very upfront that he watched an archive. Um, the words have a clear meaning because they appear multiple times. And Hardin even told me that when he was a prosecuting attorney, um, the the quality of Virginia uh, warrant request was far below this. So Pomplin was very deliberate and well spoken in his request for the uh, search warrant, and it served him well in the trial because. Um, Riketa's reply was rejected and the judge basically said you know you're not getting a Franks hearing which is on its face a kind of a blow but it was kind of a long shot to begin with I mean it's basically a get out of jail free card if he can get the search warrant thrown out over this technicality then he gets all the evidence thrown out as well and then he's a free man and there's no issue except um, his gambit actually backfired horrifically and I say that because of this Preload all these images, actually. Could have done this during the talking bit, but then I fucked it up. Okay, it's actually... Oh, I'm gonna go crazy. Here it is. So this is the order. You ready? The defendant's motion to schedule an evidentiary hearing pursuant to Frank's challenge is denied. So he didn't even get to have the hearing that they were going to schedule. The judge says, there's no fucking way I'm going to believe this. There's nothing you can show me to change my mind. It's over. You're denied. Then, the defendant's motion to suppress the firearms and ammunition is denied. Because he raised some kind of challenge about them, about the, um... Oh god, what is it? The plain view! I talked about this earlier in the stream. He said that that w was not acceptable under the plain view exception to the scope of the search warrant. Judge says that's bullshit. It's in the fucking house. It's in plain view. What more do you want? Or it was in the, the, the gun safe or whatever. And then three. And this 
is the banger, chat. All other omnibus issues not argued with particularity or otherwise specifically identified to the court as a contested issue at the omnibus hearing, whether included in the written notice or not, are denied, having been waived by the defendant. Now, this was not actually a response to anything in his um, his Frank's hearing motions. This is like a little thing that he's added himself, saying, like, we're not having another omnibus. And everybody... Everybody thought uh, Bromka from North Dakota and Minnesota, that was uh, um, one of the, the Kiwis at the, the courthouse. Um, Sean thought this. Fucking Hardin thought this. Everybody expected that there would be Omnibus and Two set out where, where Kidda could file a bunch of other bullshit to prolong the case. The judge has said no. No Omnibus hearing. Which means. <laughs> which means that any because if you remember Rikeda filed all this shit literally like the midnight before the the um the actual omnibus was scheduled so he hired counsel last second filed a bunch of shit last second got the omnibus hearing raised one thing and one thing only the franks hearing and then the judge says like look you put this off to the last second to try this long shot you don't get to go a, a second a second bite at it you don't get to do this again so now he's fucked because anything else that he wanted to raise, and he mentions in the Franks hearing um, motions that he wanted to raise a couple other things in passing. I think the judge even says, you made a vague reference to something, but um, you didn't specifically you know, bring it up, or you expect to bring it up later. That's not happening. That's what he's saying here. And that means that now there's going to be a trial. They have a scheduling conference. That's the next thing that's set up. And they're going to decide the dates of different things, and that's mostly technical where they like say, well, I'm busy that week, you know, because uh, attorneys have multiple clients. Um, so Rakita's options are now one of three things. He can either appeal this and I am almost guaranteed in saying that he will appeal this uh, because he doesn't, he doesn't have a choice. Um, if he wants, like if he's hoping to get this dismissed pre-trial, he must. He has no choice. He <laughs> not having an omnibus hearing where he raise things that actually succeed is a big detriment to him because he, he can't squash any evidence or anything. He he anything that was supposed to happen before the trial has been denied <laughs> preemptively because he didn't raise them. So he's kind of fucked. He kind of has to ask the appellate court to give him a second chance. He's like, well, wait a second. I didn't know they would be denied. I wouldn't have just asked for the Franks hearing then. He has to. He has no choice. So, and that's expensive, by the way. Even with Hardin, um, appeals and Supreme Court stuff, that's expensive because there's a, there's a lot to it. And then you have to pay fees because the fees go up as you get higher into the ranks. And you have to bind things a certain way, and you have to pay um, printing companies, and those are like their fees are they, they're monopolies, so they can charge whatever the fuck they want. Um, that shit's expensive, so that's probably going to be at least ten thousand dollars for him to appeal this one motion to the the uh, the state appellate court. That's a big deal. So he's going to appeal that. Um, he's got his house doesn't. <laughs> His Zillow listing for the second house hasn't sold yet, so he doesn't have that money. <laughs> he might reduce the price. If any of you are looking for a house in Spicer, Minnesota, keep a lookout on that listing. Because after the, the shit, when he files his appeal, I have a feeling that, that house is going to go down by $20,000 on the uh, the Zillow listing. Um, just keep in mind, you're going to be living next to Ricada. So then, uh, aside from the appeal, he either is going to have to take a plea, or he's going to have to go to trial. And um, uh, this is the issue that they have. If he takes a plea, he's guilty. And if he's guilty, then he no longer has a presumption of innocence. And if he no longer has a presumption of innocence, then the government has no reason to release uh, particularities of public record that may um, meaningfully harm the reputation of a presumed innocent person. Certain records that I have interest in chat. If he were to plea out. So he may not plea out specifically because he would not want those specific records to become matters of public uh, public record. If he goes to trial, then of course he doesn't get a plea deal, which is generally beneficial 
Um, gen- I think that it usually goes that it's more expensive and you get a harsher sentence if you if you fight it out to the bitter fucking end. So um, he may not get that. But if he goes to trial, then certain matters of public record will enter evidence and then be released as evidence to the public, as all evidence is, usually, including things that I have specific interest in, chat. So, (laughs) that's where we're at with that. And I really... I mean, Riketa's position is so fucked, and he's so full of pride. Like, a normal person, of course, would would simply take the plea. Because I I have a feeling that he's a first-time offender, he's got kids, he needs to support... It's a no-brainer. Why would to what end does the government have in putting an innocent or you know not innocent but like a a normal family man in jail for one fuck up, a non-violent offense even? None. It costs them money, and you don't pay taxes when you're in jail because you don't make any money. And then you have a bunch of kids that are more reliant on the public systems because they don't have a dad that's taking that's uh, providing for them. So it doesn't make sense for them to be like, hey, let's put you in jail forever. That doesn't make any sense. They just want you to stop costing them money and being a, a nuisance. <laughs> That's it. So, yeah, obviously the, the plea deal would make the most sense. But then if he's guilty, then the, that opens up Pandora's box, you know. So I don't know. He's kind of, he's kind of fucked. Um, and I don't feel bad for him because everybody told him that he's fucked. And what's really weird is that he's he's still so arrogant. He hasn't... It's so... I remember... Do you guys remember the special Ricada stream that I did after he got arrested? I think I had like two special Ricada streams in a row where I did like a full front-to-back commentary on his um, Anime Sucks Cope and Sneed chat uh, or stream. And then I did like another stream that was immediately after that, that was mostly just about him being arrested and his, um, his arraignment in jail. And I remember I made a prediction. I don't know if it was a prediction. I hesitate to call it that, but I was thinking aloud about how, what I expected him to do once he got out of jail, I expected that he would sit the three day weekend in jail, but he got out with bond. And then, um, with recognizance bond, then he, he paid the money to so he could um, not do piss tests. And then, funnily enough, and he he rewrites history. He paid that money so he wouldn't have to to piss test. Um, but then the family court made him do test anyways without any way out of it as part of the the custody stuff. So he, he has to do the piss test anyways. So he paid all that money for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and he tries to he tries to make that out like it was just like oh I had no idea that was going to happen and then when they said you got to go pee pee's in the cup I was like oh of course I'll do anything to get my children back he he paid so much fucking money to the point where he had to put a mortgage out on his house to get the hundred thousand dollars for him and his wife and then they made they pee tested him anyways and he, <laughs> he I know that's what happened he can try to he can cope and sneeze that it was something else but I know he paid not to do the test and then they made him do the test anyways um but i was thinking as i said that um i I was imagining what his first actions would be after he got out he would get out and then he would have to stream again that's his job so what's he going to do and i i imagined in my head that um what he would do is he would come out and then he would do a like a coming to Jesus moment, I suppose what you would say is PPP would say he likes to use that phrase, uh, and he would say like you know I, I know I've been fucked up, I know I've let people down, um, I'm gonna work with the state, I'm gonna get my kids back. I honestly I thought that there was a really good chance because I didn't I didn't see how there could be any other way to address it. You have to stream to make your money. You have to be popular. You have to have people's respect. People have to want to give you money. And and respect you in order for you to make your job doing this avenue. So I saw no possible way for him to come back and not do that. And not and not do the, you know, I've I've learned a lot type of thing. And I was completely blown away. I remember even saying on the stream though that he may not do that. Because he's like such an arrogant buffoon. 
And then, like, his first stream back, he comes back and starts accusing the government of all this fucking conspiracy and naming specific workers out, saying that they they hated him and they had pre- past uh, relations and they had prejudice against him and they lied on their oath. Like, all this crazy fucking shit. Like, immediately when his first day back, I'm thinking, holy fuck. I can't even believe it. I can't even believe it that, that that's the avenue you want to go. Like, yeah, it's just... I don't even know. I guess the the his kid testing positive for cocaine is like the worst thing, and people would never forgive him for that. But it's like there was definitely. I think there was definitely an opportunity after the arrest for him to try and make amends and be good Christian dad again. And for whatever fucking reason, there's. I'm sorry. There's no fucking way that April M. Hall is that good at anything that it's worth it. <laughs> She either, she either has, like, a mountain of dirt on this guy that would make your fucking skin crawl, or he's just, like, actually brain damaged. The holes have, like, gone from end to end. You could, you could, you could take one of those little, um, fuzzy, like, metal bendy straw things. Pipe cleaner. You could take a pipe cleaner and weasel that through his brain without ever hitting any gray matter, because there's so many fucking holes in it. Um, that's the only thing I can come up with at this point. Uh, that's the, that's the Ricada thing. Everything, everything he's been working on in the past couple of weeks since the omnibus hearing, since the last time I talked about him. I think it's been three weeks even, because I know that he came back from his three-week hiatus, um, to stream recently. So I want to say it's probably been three weeks, um, since the omnibus, since I talked about the Kiwis going to the courthouse. And in that time, his, his big project, the Franks hearing, is completely and totally eviscerated and not only was that eviscerated it also appears that he's really shot himself in the foot and he missed a lot of um more realistic opportunistic ways to mitigate damage and and posture the the case in his favor um by only raising the franks hearing at the omnibus expecting that he would just get a second omnibus hearing because he's nick Ricada and he's special there you go. That's the Ricade update. Baldo Ham, you are dismissed. To slink back away to your cracked in with your two hamster wives. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this clip. This is Perspicacity. Remember to like and subscribe.